Father Bob, have you noticed, um, uh, if you like, a normalisation of gambling in society? Oh, yes. God, yes. Yeah. But see, I, we can't speak the Roman Catholics because most of our church's early days were built on alcohol and gambling. Mm -hmm. See, we, we were the upwardly socially, we didn't become upwardly socially mobile until the 19, whatever it was, 30s or something, wasn't it? The others were in possession of real estate. The Roman Catholics came here with nothing. They had no real estate. And so you ended up, this is true, because I come from a parish 150 years old, for God's sake. It, it was, it was, it, we never showed a bit of form, so to speak, <laughs> until we ended up with a few pubs in South Melbourne and Port Melbourne, and they started to contribute, the hoteliers. You see, you see a little stained glass window every now and again that was in, uh, paid for and other things paid for by the local um, hotelier. Mm -hmm. And also the, uh, the, the other thing was, of course, the, the myriad of SP bookmakers who were all over the place and who also were contributors. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a cultural thing. Well, speaking of the, the cultural... Uh, I, I can't I'm, recommend gambling, for God's sake. I mean, uh, but all I'm saying is historically the Aussies that started from behind scratch yeah. usually found that the only way that they could get for themselves a bit of a thrill of the... Of the of, a bit of a sniff of the sport. It's the same with racing. Yeah. That's why John Wren, I think, opened, didn't he? Uh, 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 racing uh, uh, and, and also SP bookmaking because the mix, uh, the poor weren't able to have access to the race courses. Yeah. You see? So they had to find I mean, another we way. forget our roots. So Richmond and Collingwood and Fittersroy and God knows who else came from the working class. Yes. And, 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 and North Melbourne, they all came from the working class. Mm. The Ds, of course, were always the Protestants. The mighty Ds. Weren't they? The mighty Ds. Yeah. All on yeah. Map 45 yeah. at the Melways. Well, I think we, we get a bit hard on ourselves when we expect this AFL to be, in fact, be some kind of... A, an ethereal group of people, mm. they're not. They've got the, the, the differences are important, aren't they? Very, very important. Yeah. So, so we've come so so far, as Alistair and Brendan would say. I mean, the AFL should be proud of itself. Yeah. That in fact it has come so far. I'm inclined to agree. And, and because we're all on film. Disagree and <laughs> no. say we've come so far, <laughs> but client. it's taken too long. Um, speaking of culture, sorry, Angela, go on. There's a, there's a long way to go, but I think you're right, the AFL have had a, a very good start in this area. I'm, I'm yet to understand whether Cricket Victoria or Australia or mm. soccer, etc., have taken some of those stances. I know NRL have. Um, but it doesn't stop there. And, you know, from where I sit and I work in a career that's full of violence and seeing live victims of violence, children and men and women... Um, I tend to think that this needs to start earlier. It needs to start at grassroots with anti-bullying in the schoolyard and respect for people, not necessarily just women. Or it needs to start young. And I think the AFL, they probably acknowledge this, have a really great role. I mean, you're, Brennan, if I can use you as an example because you're here, but you're not someone who needs a policy not to Twitter about shagging someone on the weekend because you don't think that so hopefully so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you see if we can start by using healthy role models and teaching young people respect and behaviors and anti-bullying that's where we need to go and, and i think you'll find that uh, a lot of the footy clubs are doing a lot of community work around yeah anti-bullying and, uh, you know, cyber-bullying. There's a lot of work going on there. I want to talk about booze, Alistair, alcohol and AFL. Um, obviously, the tradition, you know, uh, alcohol, beers, getting stuck in after a match or at the end of the season, that, that's, that, that's deep in the culture of footy. My sense is that that's becoming less and less the case. I, I, th I think it's deep in the culture of rugby league um, and that's still having trouble trying to... That, that, that code is still having trouble trying to eradicate itself from that, that culture. I think um, it's less so with AFL footy now, certainly. Yeah. Uh, and it's changed. Benny and I obviously played in the same era. I, I, I can't believe the, um, the development we've made in that area in the last 10 or 15 years. Now, that's, that's gone hand in hand with the professionalism of the game, the greater demands of the game. Players just can't... They just, just physically, they can't play the game to the same level if they're... Um, if they've been influenced on a regular basis by alcohol, but alcohol is a scourge of our societies. Once again, it's, you know, oh, well, you know, is it in football clubs? 
this is this goes back to what Angela said about you know, whether it's to do with talking about um, gambling or it's to do with alcohol or whether it's to do with um, the way that we treat people. It, it, it really comes down to the, the core of our education system and how, how early are we taught some of these things and um, how do we address some of these things about uh, bullying in the, in the playground amongst, uh, amongst you know, six, seven, eight-year-old kids? I mean, if we've got a really strong and powerful education system, that with that's where the significant role models are for mine yes. and a really strong environment and strong uh, respect for the family once again that's dissipated over over time as well and we we wonder why um, these things happen in society and we as Benny said before because all these things have eroded over time we're still searching for these people in society that can actually provide us with some sort of standard yeah and it's just like oh well AFL footy is the most yes. Uh, the most portrayed game in, uh, and the most popular game in Australia it continues to expand. We've now got 18 teams. We've got over yep. 800 players. And it's just like, yep, he's going to be my role model. And really, the role model should probably be his dad or his older yep. brother. Yep. But that's been eroded over time now. Yep. But, I um, think our whole standards as a society have, have dropped. But Alistair, I'd argue that the aspirational nature of AFL, of the AFL player, uh, of the AFL club, and the increasingly... Um, increasingly strong values of AFL clubs, I think that they do provide aspiration for the father that wants to be a good father. You know, I think that my view is the AFL has become so strong and, and genuinely has got the, the strength of character and the uh, strength of conviction to do lots of great things. I, I really believe that. And, um, and I think that they, the clubs and the, and the organisation itself is pursuing those, I, I think they're genuine when they pursue um, you know, the drugs policy, alcohol policy, discrimination policies. I think that they're absolutely genuine when they attack these issues. The issue for me is you attack it, you do a campaign, and then you might move on to the next one thinking that you've done that one. Yeah, where in fact these things are just perpetual. You, should never, you, should, you shouldn't stop. Yeah, yeah? I'm going. Yeah. Now, we're going to do questions. Um, please. Hello, Hi. sir. Uh, thank you. If I could ask a question to the panel and maybe to Alistair in particular, you've talked a lot about the problems with the journalists, media, the social uh, contacts. Well, what about the other side of it? Isn't there some um, wrongdoing or criticism that should be directed to the media that, in effect, beat up some of these issues? Completely out of proportion of what they perhaps deserve. Uh, we, we've got we've got no control over it. We we try as best we can to um, to manage things that we can control. And so um, because there's so much media out there that want to um, uh, want to leverage off the exposure of AFL football, then um, you know, we've got extraordinary demands from print media, airwaves, and television, and um, the management of that is extraordinarily dif difficult and, um, and we feel that the, the print media have got a, a responsibility too in terms of um, their, um, their, the exposure that they give to the game. Yeah. Um, but we've got no control over editorials no. um, and so we've just got to try and manage what we can control. Yeah. So you can control your website and your, you know, your social interactions. Benny? 